Okay, now let's move to the second question from the Mindful Parenting webinar. And the question was, um, at what age should we start talking about difficult issues um, like sex and drugs, etc., to kids? Now, I think that if you're in a mindful path, then you and you're using mindfulness to raise your kids, your kids would know to be aware of how things make them feel before they do something. So, for example, before entering their relationship, they would know how this person makes them feel. My daughter always, when she has a crush on somebody and I ask her about it, she says, well, he treats me really well. He makes me feel good. Right? So one thing is to sort of, when, when you're on the mindful path, is that you're having a conversation with your child about how things make them feel and how things feel in their body and within themselves. So hopefully they're pretty aware of um, how certain people and how certain situations make them feel and they have learned by then to, to honor that. Now the other thing that I said is that after the age of 16 it's kind of hard to influence your kids unless they want you to, unless they come to you with questions. You can't really lecture them, you can't really point things to them, you can't advise them. That would have the opposite effect. So what, what we were talking about is that it's better to if you want to set an example, to do it beforehand. So if you are, um, if you have a commitment to teach them about drugs, you could um, watch some videos or you could go to places where they talk. You know, I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to take me to these events called No to Drugs, where it was educational events, and that really got ingrained. And I went to an art school. I mean, you don't understand how many drugs were there from day one, but I never tried anything. Um, well, I, maybe like I think I, I did, I smoked marijuana maybe one or twice in the five years that I was at RISD, um, but there were hard drugs going on, heroin, cocaine, speed, um, LSD, everybody was trying them, and because that was ingrained in me, right, so when we nurture something in them, um, not from a place of lecturing them, but sort of exposing them to things like that, then it sort of it becomes an underlying commitment. It's a little bit like brainwashing, right? But we're brainwashed anyway, so we might as well um, put in there some things that are um, protective and of use to them. Um, so the other way you can, is about sex, one thing that's important to me is when I talk to my daughter, um, we talk about relationships and that we talk about how to set boundaries and that uh, we never do something that doesn't honor who we are. Even if we want the other person to like us, uh, if we want to be liked in general, we should always ask whether this honors us and that we're always responsible for setting the boundaries in our relationship. And if we don't respect ourselves enough to do that, then we can't expect others to do that. So it really goes back to having them uh, be aware of how every situation feels. Um, you can also use things that come up throughout their life, I think it's better to sort of start educating them as early as possible with things that come up. So if a conversation comes up or if they happen to see something on TV or if they happen to read something in a book and you're talking about it, well, you can just um, discuss it. Discuss, well, you know, how would you feel in this situation and what do you think would honor her? And uh, if she was really true to herself, what do you think she would have done or he would have done. So having them play other roles or get into other people's place, position, if you think that that's, um, there's a useful lesson to learn there, I think that's always great. Okay, thank you.